I think this is the perfect time to learn about AI, the artificial intelligence, because the hype is over and now we are seeing particularly good use cases and good use implementation about the AI. Watch out this video if you are interested in knowing about the AI and what's it's going ahead and what's the trend of the AI. Hey there everyone, my name is Hitesh and I have been seeing and witnessing all the hypes that are going around for almost like 15 years or so and I've participated in probably all of them. I have seen the era where mobile phones were first introduced, getting into the app cycle. Then I saw a lot of rise in the web development, mobile development, web threes, cryptos, and the boom of the AI. And I think I can share a little bit thoughts and my experience around the AI and why I think this is the perfect time if you want to get started by learning the AI. And no, this is not a course pitch to show you that, hey, the AI course is here. No, it's not about that. It's also not the video about which says, hey, go ahead and learn just the Python to learn about the AI. This is really a pivoting moment for all of us and we need to understand and understand the importance about why I'm saying that AI is here, it has arrived, and this is the perfect time for all the engineers to actually start learning about it or at least start exploring about that. I'll give you the ideas about how you can use it, how you can utilize it, and what should be the mindset uh, behind all of this. So stay tuned, buckle up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's dive into the world of the AI and how you should actually take it down coming forward. So let me first introduce you to the screen because I think there we can have a better discussion about what's happening. So, so far we have seen the hype around AI and a couple of other words as well, which includes machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and so many other words. But the whole idea for us is how can I use it? I want to utilize it. Before coming that, you need to understand that there are majorly two kinds of engineers uh, that we have. We have so many types of engineers who does a variety of different tasks, but one of them is research engineers. So first of all is the category of the research engineers. And the another category that we have is actually application engineers. So let me tell you the difference between them. The research engineers are the fellow who sees the problem and try to fix up it, this problem with a generic solution. The best example could be that, hey, the team who worked on the React, now you don't need to learn React.js for learning any AI, I'm just giving you some of the examples up here. So this team found out that, hey, there is a problem in updating the UI based on different contexts. So we need something which is very reactive in nature. If there is an update on X place, it goes through and flow in every single place. That is where the React.js was born. It was not born by application engineer, it was born by application engineers who turned into research engineer, solved a problem by researching about it and built the React.js. And there are so many other use cases like Django and whatnot. And what happened after that, this framework gets distributed to the application engineers, it gets reach of it, and eventually they build a website through it. So any website that you see or a web application that you see that is using the React.js, this is majorly the work being done by the application engineers. They are, uh, they know half of the things and half of the things they research around the web and they just stitch around the product of it. So this is where your uh, application engineers comes into the picture. And AI for so long has been into this domain, the research domain. So all the people who were crazy good in the mathematics, who really understood how to fine tune a model and how to use your data and train a model around it and gives you a variety of models and that requires a specific mathematical need for it. You need to have understandability about understanding the graphs and charts and how fine tuning of the models can work. So, so far this AI was into this realm and this domain, the research part of it. But recently what you'll see that this realm is now opening up and people have realized that just fighting the war on the models and which model is the best is never going to make AI the front stream, the front foot of how the AI should be. And they have tried and now they are releasing these models to everyone in general along with the SDKs so that anybody and everybody can build. So the major bridge that we see up here are SDKs. So these SDKs are interpreter of these this research work into the application world. So what are these SDKs? These SDKs are that, hey, you stay in your language, uh, maybe JavaScript, maybe TypeScript, uh, maybe Python, maybe Java, uh, whatever is your language, you just stay in that domain. That is the whole idea. You provide us the SDKs and you work with that. Uh, probably I should move it here a little bit so that I can have a space. 
All right. So this is the whole idea that provide me the SDKs and I'll go with that. So this is the current phase. So these research work, these companies, high-end companies, uh, you name it, uh, maybe Gemini, maybe OpenAI, all of them, and there are a plethora of them, I'll walk you through some of them, they are now focusing on bringing in SDKs and are trying to give this as an app to the application engineer so that they can work on it. Not only that, the first step usually is to bring out the SDKs, but what eventually it does, it gives you the most important thing about it, which is uh, frameworks, or you can say as libraries as well. So eventually what will happen, these SDKs and these uh, interpretation in the each language is going to become less mainstream. It will become like, it is obviously the part of it, but it becomes a less of a mainstream. But the whole thing is taken up by the frameworks. And what do you mean by framework here? Framework means it will give, give you enough of the tools and built in just click and go kind of a stuff. I'm not talking about the low code tools and all of that. Entirely programming centric, just like you see Django, just like you see in XJS, exactly like that, frameworks starts to expose and these frameworks are being utilized by these application engineers so that you can go ahead and start using AI into your workflow. So in the initial days, you might have noticed that this whole AI thing was kind of very useful for only the large organization. And why so? Because these organizations, only the large orgs, were having this kind of crazy data. So for example, Amazon, Flipkart, these are big giant e-commerce websites and they have this large data set so that they can perform analysis with their first custom and fine tune models. But now what, what is required in the AI domain that it should not be just a proprietary or a use case for large organization, but every single small organization as well. Let's just say there is an organization which is working on the open source domain. They have a good documentation. Now people want to ask questions on that small documentation as well. Compared to a large organization, this documentation is small, very, very small, just probably a few 10 or 20 pages. But people want to ask these questions to these documentation in the generic language and want to reduce down their research time. This is exactly where things are going ahead. So now even the small organization can utilize these frameworks and can use any research data, OpenAI, Gemini, Llama, you name it. You don't need to go in detail about what these models are doing. You are more worried about how my framework is going to utilize this research or these models best and can transfer this whole data into my application. This is where the magic happens. Once the research work is done, once the frameworks are out, this is exactly the perfect time, every single hype that, hey, things are now making progress. So what, what's this frameworks? So uh, the first you are going to notice that there are SDKs available. So this is just one example I'm taking. So Varsal uh, built this AI toolkit for the TypeScript, but there are others as well. I'll walk you through with them. So you can unify the AI and you can notice here, it doesn't care what model you're using or which model is your favorite one. It could be uh, open AI, it could be something from the hugging phase. You just name it. I don't have to leave my favorite programming language or where I'm already comfortable. If I know TypeScript or JavaScript ecosystem, hey, that's, uh, I can utilize and inject that. Uh, recently, uh, we built a, a feedback application as well. In case you haven't checked out on the channel, check that out. The entire playlist uses this entire SDK and we were using uh, OpenAI, but some of our uh, students build same things using the Gemini as well. All you need to do is just swipe out the OpenAI reference and bring in the Gemini. That's it. And you're going to notice more runtimes are also coming in. So I told you, SDKs, runtimes, uh, all these things comes up first and then the frameworks comes up. So this is one, another one from uh, our friends at Pieces. Uh, they are having this runtime and this runtime is specially focused on the code part of it because most of the NLPs are designed in research about, uh, hey, how the reviews are, are they good or they bad? How the comments are, are they good or bad? But none of them is actually centered towards the coding. So they are actually pioneering in it and are exposing their runtime and the SDKs for just doing exactly that, detect the code. And there are other use cases and special specializations of the SDKs for that. For example, some of them are very specialized on image. Some of them are very specialized on Figma. A lot of them are coming in. And the best part is you don't have to leave your language. If you notice the Spring, if you're a Java fanboy, uh, then go ahead and look out the Spring AI. And you can go ahead and see that how many of these implementations and use cases are there uh, right in that. So embedding models are coming in into the OpenAI, Azure, Olama, Onyx, uh, Postgres, whole lot of them, whole lot of them. 
And best part is you don't have to leave your favorite framework or libraries. These are additional framework. You just inject them and keep building what you were building, but now with the power of it. Now, as I mentioned that there were specialty of the framework. So these were all the SDKs, but as we can see now, things are moving in the framework direction. Spring AI is one of that. And apart from this, you might have heard about Langchain. This is another framework which allows you to utilize as many models as you wish in your favorite programming language. So we can see there is a Langchain, a docs. If you go ahead and click on it, uh, the docs are available in both languages, uh, in the Python, in the JavaScript, and of course, in the TypeScript as well, you can convert that, no big deal here. But I really like this approach that I can just go ahead and build a simple LLM application, uh, language models, I can set up my Jupyter, uh, all of these things, but the same is available, I checked it out. Yes, it was there, uh, I guess somewhere here. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, 100% sure it's somewhere here. I need to check it. Or probably I can just go ahead and just go ahead and Google it. Uh, Langchain, and I want to work in the JS. So yes, the Langchain JS is available here. And exactly same guide. You can just go ahead and how to guides and tutorials. Everything is here. Probably this is better. <laughs> uh, so you can build your entire application. I don't have to leave my NPM, Yarn, wherever I'm going through use exactly the same thing and can be comfortable in OpenAI, Anthropic, uh, Fireworks, Mistral, Grok, Vertex, which one is your favorite? You just go ahead and use that. Not only the Langchain is there, if you're thinking Langchain is only the framework, no, we are about to see a flood of these frameworks coming in. So another one that you'll see is the Haystack, the production-ready open AI, open source AI framework. These two are important keywords here, production-ready and open source. Claim that we are production ready is not something that you can do on the day one. It has been around, it's Python focused. Uh, so yes, more will come around and uh, you can use it for multi-model AI, conversational, context generation. It's all about what you do with that superpower. That is where we are. And not only that, you'll see that some code specific, code centrics like uh, GitHub Copilot is one of the most famous one, but it's not the only one now. It's not a proprietary thing now. A lot of companies are coming in. Yes, they started it and made it mainstream. Other people also started, but they were not as popular as GitHub. Uh, but now you'll see a lot of them, like Codium is also coming in. And if you notice all of their pricing, it's free for individual developers, as last I checked. So it's individually free. You can go ahead and try them out that, hey, I liked it, I don't like it, whatever your thoughts are, but hey, the options are there. And it doesn't really matter that we are backed up by uh, the OpenAI only, or the Llama by the Facebook, or there's a Mistral around it. Uh, there's a new one which is getting a lot of hype, which is Claude. Uh, which one? Whichever you like, you can just go ahead and pick one. So my whole summary of this video, I know this was a little bit of a longer chain of the video, but this whole video was about to give you the thought process that why I think that this is the best time to learn the AI, staying in wherever you are. If you are in the TypeScript JS ecosystem, you can do that right from there. And if you are into the Java ecosystem, you can do that right from there. But the whole idea is now is the perfect time that you start focusing a little bit about knowing the AI nuances. If you are not aware about uh, what is Pinecone, what are vector databases, it could be wrong thing. And I'll help you in doing that. Hit that subscribe button and I'll bring you more of these conversational terms so that you can do more research and you are not completely unknown to the AI. Let me know in the comment section. I'll bring up more videos so that you can become more conversational in the AI field. You know about the terms and you can do your more research work on that. I have been doing that for almost last one year. Super happy with the outcome and we are enjoying it thoroughly. So let me know if you want to learn more about it and the terms about it. I would love to make more videos on it. If you enjoyed this video, share this. This is an important video. And such videos get usually less share, but I would be really happy to see your shares on Twitter and LinkedIn that, hey, some informational videos also get shared. That's it for this video, and let's catch up in the next one.